Alex Mackey never imagined that in his 40s, he would turn his love of diving into more than a hobby and that it would someday be his saving grace. I'm not a morning person, but I've always said there's two things we're getting up early for, skiing and diving. But that wasn't always the case. Me as a child versus me today, I was always like super scrawny and super nerdy and into like Star Wars action figures and anything not athletic. Like I was not athletic at all. Mackie was born in South Carolina, but it was California that had his heart. I lived in all parts of the U.S. and I lived in Huntington Beach from the time I was two to the time I was nine and I always loved Southern California. So uh, shortly after I graduated from college, I made my way back to California and I've been here ever since. After graduating from Brigham Young University in Utah, moving back to California and a few odd jobs later, he met his beautiful wife Janice. I actually met my wife while I was working at the software company and we met at church and we got married shortly after I quit that job and started at the ad agency in Santa Monica. After four years in West LA, Mackie and his wife decided Torrance was where they would build their roots. We bought a house in Torrance and a year later we had our first child. And right around the time that I had my, that we had our first child, I, we both quit our jobs and I started my own business. It was insane. <laughs> As Mackie worked on his production company, his wife Janice stayed home and took care of the family. Yeah, I went from the business side of advertising to creative and got into video production. And then I also started an after school arts program teaching kids to sculpt and draw. It was challenging at first. You know, I think as with any new business, you spend your first five years kind of struggling and in the red and trying to make it grow. And we went through those same challenges to make our businesses successful. and. But we were very blessed. They both did grow at, uh, at a pretty good rate and you know, both kind of became full-time businesses within just a couple of years. Business grew, but for Mackie, growing his family would be much more challenging. Eventually our second son was born almost four years after our first one. So there's a four year gap between the first and the second. When Spencer was born, it was, it was such a blessing because it had, been a challenge just trying to have a second child and then losing so when Spencer was born we were elated and just you know felt very blessed. Spencer was born in 2008 and then in 2010 Janice got pregnant with our third child Seth and Seth ended up being born three months early and uh, was in the hospital for the next five months in the NICU. The stress of having Seth in the hospital took a toll on Mackie, who began overeating in an attempt to cope. Then that's where it just started becoming super easy to like on the drive to the hospital, I'd stop by 7-Eleven and grab some cookies. And then on the way back from the hospital, I would stop off again and grab some donuts. And it was, it, it was just so easy to find comfort in food and just sugar in general. With two boys at home and one in the hospital, the Mackies really had a lot on their plate. One time we got a call from the hospital and they're just like, get over here, this is it. It was four in the morning. So we grabbed the kids out of bed. Uh, they didn't even have shoes on and we like raced down to the hospital and uh, we didn't think he was gonna make it. And um, you know, we called our bishop down there and he came down and, and uh, and then he pulled out of it and, and he, was, he was fine. But you know, there, there are a handful of like up and down moments and we had times where they were just like, you know, you need to prepare yourself and you need to figure out if you're gonna pull the plug in a couple days or you know, like decide what you wanna do, it's maybe time. Seth did get strong enough to finally come home, but it wasn't too long before things took a turn for the worse. Seth passed away on December 2nd, 2010. So it was right around Christmas time. And the first six days were oh, so difficult. I was planning the funeral and, you know, just, just getting, just getting the, everything, all the arrangements made and, you know, but then the other part of it was that we had 
two young boys that were still, you know, very excited about. Sorry. They're very excited about Christmas. So, you know, that, that helped a lot, I think, in a sense. Mackie says, there is no pain worse than losing a child. My advice to people that have lost, have lost a child especially, would be just not to lose hope. Take it a day at a time because that's really what you have to do. And we even had moments where it was just, you know, we'd take it an hour at a time. We're just like, okay, we're just gonna get through this next gonna get through the afternoon. Mackie had to be strong for his family, for his wife and two boys. This is when he made a crucial decision to change his diet. I packed on a bunch of weight. I got up to a little bit over 220 and it was, I was approaching my 40th birthday and I had, it, there were like three events that kind of like all played into each other. The first was I had my doctor's physical coming up and I knew I was gonna get lectured for being overweight. And I didn't wanna get lectured, so I was like, ah, oh, maybe I should start losing weight. And then at the same time, my driver's license was expiring. And so I knew I had to get a new DMV picture. And you know, those things last like 12 years. So I thought, well, I don't wanna look fat in my DMV picture for the next 12 years. So, you know, between the two of those, I'll, I'll start losing weight. Together with his wife, he decided to lose weight and a new adventure awaited. I was bringing my kids to swim class at El Camino College here, and they were jumping off the diving board, and I was sitting there talking with uh, Corey Stanberry, the coach at El Camino, and also runs the swimming classes. And as my kids were jumping off the board, I was like, oh yeah, I took a diving class when I was in college, like over 20 years ago, and it was really fun. And he said, oh, you should take my diving class. And I was like, really? And so he did. Mackie became a full-time student and rekindled his love for the hobby. So first day of class, I was very nervous because it was in a sense going back to school. But also I was just like, oh, this is going to be like a fun diving class. So I come, I had my swimsuit on, I was ready to go. And I show up, and I'm like the only person in a swimsuit. No one got into the water that day. But the next day when they did, he remembered how much he loved diving. And not too long after that, he joined the El Camino diving team. So January 2013, I started school full-time here at El Camino. I started Dive Team, and Dive Team actually started a, a couple weeks before school started. So we started practicing, and a weekend to Dive Team, I had a bunk dive uh, off the three meter, and I tore both rotator cuffs. And so that ended my school career and my diving career pretty much before it even started. He was only on the team for a week before he got injured and had to do major surgery on both shoulders. Until that moment, I didn't think that I loved diving as much as I did. And as soon as I heard those words, your diving career is done, you cannot do diving anymore this year. I went home and I was devastated. Like I went into the bathroom and I was just like sobbing because I was so sad that I couldn't dive. I was, I was heartbroken. And it was at that moment I realized, I want to finish this story. I want to, I want to see if I can make it to state. And I want to see if I can go all the way. He was on a mission to not only get back on the team, but make it to state competition. But to do that, I felt like I needed a coach so that I could truly make it to state. But I didn't know anybody. And, um, you know, when you think diving, there's like, really only one name that comes to mind as far as divers, that was Greg Luganis. After one email, Mackie got his answer. And training would start with Olympic medalist Greg Luganis. This would mean going to dive camp in Indiana, which came highly recommended by his new coach. So I came back here with kind of a whole new set of knowledge. They, you know, changed my approach and they changed my, you know, like a lot of the core fundamentals because of work obligations, Mackie wasn't able to compete until the following year. And after six weeks of training, it was finally time for Mackie to show off his new skills. And, 
and then competition started uh, in kind of towards the middle end of February. And then basically every weekend you have a meet. And then once regionals hit, you had um, all of Southern California. So this was my first time competing and the first competition, oh my goodness, I was so, so nervous. I was literally, I was shaking. Like my hands were shaking, I was shaking. And my coach was just like, just relax. He's like, it's just a dive, just one dive at a time. And, and Greg also, he's always been, his focus is very oriented towards the internal versus the external portion of it. During the conference, Mackey was undefeated. Ended up taking first at every meet uh, during conference. Regionals included all of Southern California. I should have had the confidence to go in knowing I'm gonna do all right at regionals. And I, I think in the back of my head, I, you know, I felt like I knew I was in pretty good shape. So regionals, I ended up taking third place on three meter and fifth place on one meter. So I finished top eight on both boards, which got me to state. So I was super excited about that. Only the top eight scorers of all of Southern California make it to the two day state swimming and diving championships. And Mackey was the only one from El Camino College to compete. So my new goal was I, I, I saw that the top eight at state would become like all American. I was like, you know, that's like, that's a good realistic goal. Like let's become an all American diver at 44, become an all American diver. And uh, you know, that became kind of the new goal. First day of state was three meter and I did terrible. <laughs> My, I can't even remember now, like the order of when I just started like doing terrible dives, but I just did poorly all the way around. And it was just dive after dive after dive. I just did badly. And so I was actually, I was really, really bummed and very depressed that day. I didn't make, I didn't make all American and I did terrible. And if I'd done my personal best, I would have been second place and I ended up 11th. And like this goal that, you know, I'd had for all these years and then just to end up at at 11th place, like I just felt like I had failed. You know, it almost brought me back to like, it, or it did, it brought me back to those days of like eating my sorrows away. The next day was the one meter competition, which is even more competitive, but Mackey performed better than he did the previous day. And the winners were announced. So then they start announcing like the places and, and I knew I did decently. I knew I had not done great. And I knew I had not done terrible. I didn't have any horrible dives. So I knew I was like, I was somewhere, hopefully top 10 at the very least. So they start announcing 12. I'm like, please don't call my name. Please don't call my name. 11, please don't call my name. Didn't call my name. And then they're like, and now our top 10. I'm like, yes, at least I made top 10. I beat yesterday's record or yesterday's score. And uh, so then they announced the top, the, the, the in 10th place. And like, I'm like, please don't be me. Please don't be me. And it wasn't me. And they're like, a ninth. And I'm like, oh, please don't be me. This is like, this is the last spot. If I don't get called at ninth, I'll at least be all American. And they call ninth place and it wasn't me. And I'm like, yes, like I was so excited because it was just like, I did it. Like I, I got my two goals. And at that point, it didn't matter what place I got. I had achieved the two goals I had set out to do, which was make it to state and become all American. And just at that moment, like I was so elated. And then they called eighth place and they're like, an eighth place is Aaron Garcia of Riverside College. And I was like, yes, like I finally beat Aaron on the one meter. Like I'd never beat Aaron on the one meter. He had always beat me on one meter. And uh, so I beat Aaron on the one meter. And then they're like, and in seventh place, William, big fat diver, Alex Mackey from El Camino College is like, yes, <laughs> seventh place. So like seventh place, I was, I was happy with seventh place. It's amazing, you know, and it's, there's a bit of a exhale moment, I think, once you've accomplished a goal that you've had in place for the last four years. Mackey documented his entire journey in a book he wrote titled The Big Fat Diver. I chose the title Big Fat Diver, I guess, because one, I thought it was funny and, you know, I have no problem kind of poking fun at, at myself. And it, the reality is that I am a big fat diver as compared to all the other divers that are out there and the people that I'm competing against. You know, it's, it's part of the journey. It's part of the story. The diving is part of the story. The weight loss is part of the story. And, um, you know, so I thought it was apropos to put both of those elements in the title.
If there's one thing that I would want people to get out of the book, it would be that it's never too late and that you can go after your goals and to not let anything get in your way and to dream big and go for it. It's never too late. For Faces of Torrance, I'm your host, Jesse Pierre, speaking to ordinary people doing extraordinary things.